This week's Torah portion, Emor, includes the instruction to count the Omer. The children of Israel spent 210 years in Egypt, most of those oppressed and enslaved. And on the 15th of Nisan, in the year 2448 in the Jewish calendar, their world was completely transformed. They experienced freedom for the very first time. But it wasn't to end there. Moses is foretold, when you take the nation out of Egypt, you will serve God on this mountain, referring to Sinai. And so the Jews begin seven weeks of preparation, getting ready for that moment when they'll be given not just freedom, but purpose. They prepare for the holiday of Shavuot, the festival of the giving of the Torah. Every year we do the same. On the second day of Passover, we begin a seven-week counting process. Each and every night, counting off the particular day. It's interesting because the commandment to count the Omer, it says in Hebrew, in the text, Usafartem lachem, you shall count for yourselves. The word Usafartem has the same root in the word Sapirut which means radiance. The Torah is telling us that your lechem, yourselves, must be radiant. When Rabbi Shner Zaman of Liadi, the Alter Rebbe, related this teaching, he asked, and with what does one brighten oneself? Without a pause, he continued in the tone of a response, with the seven complete weeks, that is, through refining one's seven emotional traits. There's a story told of one of the first followers of the Alter Rebbe, Rabbi Gavriel. They called him Reb Gavriel Nose Chen, the, the charming, and his wife, Chana Rivka. Reb Gavriel was one of the most important members of the Viteps community. 25 years had passed since his wedding, but unfortunately, they had not been blessed with children. Then, due to various persecutions, he had lost all his money. It caused him great pain when the Alter Rebbe sent for funds to redeem some captives, and he didn't have the ability to participate in the amount he had been asked for. When his wife found out, she sold some of her remaining jewelry to raise the needed funds. She washed and shined the coins until they sparkled. With a prayer that her fate too should sparkle and shine, she wrapped up the coins and sent them off with her husband to the great Alter Rebbe. When Reb Gavriel arrived in Liozhne, he placed the packet of coins on the Rebbe's desk. When he opened the package, the coins sparkled with an unusual light. The Alter Rebbe was lost in thought. And then he said, From all the gold silver and copper that the Jews contributed for the building of a tabernacle. Nothing sparkled like the laver, which was made from the copper mirrors that the Jewish women had joyfully contributed. Tell me, where did these coins come from? Reb Gavriel had no choice but to tell the Alter Rebbe about his financial setbacks and about how his wife, Chana Rifka, daughter of Bela, had acquired these coins. The Alter Rebbe rested his head on his hands in deep contemplation for quite a long time. When he looked up, he blessed Reb Gavriel and his wife with children, long life, wealth, and extraordinary charm. He instructed Reb Gavriel to close his business in Vitebsk and to begin to trade in precious stones and diamonds. The Rebbe's blessing was fulfilled completely. Reb Gavriel Nosechen became wealthy. They had sons and daughters, and he passed away at the age of 110, and his wife survived him by another two years. When he told this story, the previous Rebbe, Reb Yosef Yitzchak, quoted the teaching of the Alter Rebbe, who said, when the Torah tells us about counting the Omer, as a preparation for receiving the Torah, it uses the phrase, Usfartem lachem, you shall count for yourselves. In addition to the simple meaning, it also teaches us 
you shall make yourselves shine. As in the word sapir, a radiant, precious stone. I think the lesson from the story, besides the many other deep messages, is that even though the coins given to charity were the same amount and value, when they are given with self-sacrifice and joy, they attain a whole different worth and shine with a whole different light. They illuminate our lives even in this world and certainly in the world to come. I'm Rabbi Yisrael Bernath. Shabbat Shalom.